الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة العراف أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإلى مدينا أخاهم شعيبا قال يا قوم اعبدوا الله ما لكم من إله غيره قد جاءتكم بينة من ربكم فأوفوا الكيل والميزان ولا تبخسوا الناس أشياءهم ولا, ولا تفسدوا في الأرض بعد إصلاحها ذالکم خیر لکم ان کنتم مؤمنین صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و حلو لخدتم من لسانی یفقفو قولی اللہم ربنا الہمنا رشدنا و عزنا من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعه و ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ربنا انس وحشتنا في قبورنا وارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمة اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته آنا الليل وآنا النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين آمين Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we had completed our study of 84 ayat of Surah Al-Araf last night. And today we are beginning with ayat number 85. But before I proceed further, let me share with you a few points about the pair relationship among the Bakki surahs of the Qur'an. As I told you in the very beginning, most of the surahs of the Qur'an are in the form of pairs. وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَا زَوْجَيْنِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ This has been a, a usual rule with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creating everything in pairs. Although it's a disputable issue whether Qur'an is also a creation or not, but this rule seems to be so categorical that it applies to the surahs of the Qur'an also. Surahs are in pairs. Now what are the main features of the relationship of pair among the Makki surahs? Number one point, and that is easily explained if you keep before you two basic and fundamental terms of the Qur'an. At-Tazkir be ala illah at tazkir be ayyam illah admonishing people with reference to the blessings of Allah his creative activity the manifestations of his attributes all these things you know and the second is at tazkir be ayyam illah you may call them generally lessons from history but Ayyamillah, in Quranic terminology, it denotes the very big events which happened during the course of history when whole nations were exterminated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whole people of Nu, whole people of Hud, whole people of Saleh, both the big townships of Sodom and Amora, destroyed, annihilated, exterminated. Ayyamullah, they are the very big and mighty days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will find in one surah of that pair that it will be devoted more to tazkir bi ala illa, Allah's blessings, Allah's creations, Allah's signs in this universe, in the heavens, in the earth and so on. And in the other surah, at tazkir bi ayyamillah. You will find this, you know, in Surah Al-Anam, we didn't have any mention of such incidents. 20 sections, 165, 
آیات نو مینشن وٹ ہیپن ٹو پیپل آف نو اور ٹو ہود اور ٹو پیپل آف سالے اور ٹو دو سٹیز آف سودوم اینڈ گمورا ایٹسیٹرا ایٹسیٹرا اینڈ ہیئر ان سورت العراف یو فائنڈ مور دین ہاف آف دی سورا دیٹ یو نو دیٹ ریلیٹس دیز ایونٹس وی ہیو ریڈ فور لاسٹ نائٹ وٹ ہیپن ٹو دی پیپل آف نو وٹ ہیپن ٹو دی پیپل آف ہود وٹ ہیپن ٹو دی پیپل آف سالے وٹ ہیپن ٹو دی سٹیز آف سودوم اینڈ گمورا where hazrat e lut alaihi salam was sent and we shall be studying two more today that is what happened to the people of shuaib what happened to firaun and you know his army and his chiefs so these are the six incidents out of history which are repeated in the quran you find again and again and again and again in many of the makki surahs second point if you look to the history of the prophets in the quran Again, you must keep in mind two basic terminologies of Quran, two basic terms. Number one, Qasasun Nabiyyin, the stories of prophets. These stories relate mostly to the personal virtues of the prophets. Not in that way that a messenger was sent and the nation rejected him and the nation was exterminated. Not in that way. Qasasun Nabiyyin. You will read, you know, in whole surah of Surah to Yusuf, 13 sections, a very detailed history of Hazrat Yusuf, but nowhere any mention that he claimed and he demanded, believe me, obey me, or you will be exterminated. Nothing of the sort. But his character, soundness of his character, that is being discussed. So this is Qasasun Nabiyyin. And the second, I told you, Ambao Rosul, which I have already explained. The messengers sent to people, nations, they rejected and they were exterminated. So, Qasasun Nabi Yeen is something else and Abbao Rusul is something else. Now, if you come to Surah Al-Araf, as I told you in Surah Al-Anam, it's totally at-tazkir be alaylah and only a mention of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. But his personal character, his virtues, but nothing of that sort. Nothing, no mention of any Ambaullah. And as compared to that, we find in Surah, Surah Al-Araf, as I told you, more than half of the whole Surah that is occupied by these Ambaw Rusul. But in addition to this, we find in Araf, Surah Al-Araf especially, lessons from the history. In the beginning, we find the beginning of human race or mankind. and the end that will happen to it. In the very beginning, the story of Adam and Iblis, that was the beginning of the human history. In the end, what will happen to them? The humans in the hereafter. Ashab al-Jannah, Ashab al-Araf, Ashab al-Nar, their conversations. Wanada Ashab al-Nar, Ashab al-Jannah, Wanada Ashab al-Araf, and so on. So that was the beginning and this is the end. Beginning, story of Iblis and Adam. And what will happen in the hereafter. In between is the history. Qasatul Nabiyyin and Ambao Rusul both in between them. And then we find, you know, that we have six Ambao Rusul in this surah. But about this, you know, there is a very beautiful division. As I told you, the geographical background that Hazrat Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, he is said to be the second Adam because the whole progeny of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam was annihilated. And actually what now we find humanity on this globe is all progeny of Nuh alayhi salatu was salam because actually the habitation of this planet Till that time was only limited to that area which we today call the Kurdistan. Part of it in Turkey, part of it in Iraq, part of it in uh, Iran. And you know this is the region. And from here three sons of Hazrat Inu alayhi salam and their progenies. One son Sam. The Semitic nations. They, are, they belong to the progeny of Sam alayhi salatu wa salam. They went down from that to the Arabian Peninsula. Iraq and then the Arabian Peninsula. The progeny of Hazrat 
یافس علیہ السلام دے کراس اوور دی سینٹرل ماؤنٹین آف سینٹرل ماؤنٹینس رینج آف ایشیا اینڈ آفٹر کراسنگ دی رینج ایسٹ ورلڈ اینڈ ویسٹ ورلڈ ٹوڈ چائنا منگولیا اینڈ دین ٹو یوروپ یو نو رشیا اینڈ یوروپ دے آر دی پروجنی آف حضرت یافس ان بٹوین واز دی پروجنی آف حضرت سام حضرت ہام ایسٹ ورڈس ایران انڈو پاکستان ویسٹ ورڈس ایجپٹ اینڈ یو نو دی دیز کنٹریز سو دیٹ از دی ڈسٹریبیوشن آف دی پروجنی آف نو علیہ سلاۃ وسلام نا قرآن مجید از گونگ اس دی ہسٹری آف اونلی دی پروجنی آف سام حضرت ابراہیم واز آلسو فرام امنگ دی پروجنی آف سام حضرت ہود آلسو قوم عاد قوم صالح آل دیز ور دی سیمیٹک ریسز دی سیمیٹک ٹرائبس یو نو وچ ور انہیبٹنگ عراق اور دی عربین پیننسولا اینڈ امنگ دیز وی فائنڈ سکس آر مینشن تھری وی می کال دیم پری ابراہمک ایریا ناؤ دس از انیدر ریسپیکٹ یو مسٹ کیپ دی ٹائم اینڈ اسپیس کمپلیکس وچ از ان دی بیک گراؤنڈ وین وی آر ریڈنگ دی نیوز آف دی messengers of Allah and the history of Muslims of Allah, you must have it in the background, the time and space, you know, geographical background, historical background, what was the time framework. So actually human history as we have been able to know up till now doesn't go beyond 5,000 years. And nearly that is the time when Hazrat Ibrahim wasalam, appeared in the Chaldean Empire, which was, this is Iraq of today. The Ur city, which was the headquarter of that empire, Hazrat Ibrahim was born there. Now before Hazrat Ibrahim, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, Hazrat Hud alayhi salam, Hazrat Saleh alayhi salam, these three are pre-Abrahamic era. And I count Hazrat Luth also, although he is a contemporary of Hazrat Ibrahim, he was a nephew, nephew of Hazrat Ibrahim, but because there was one generation gap, Ibrahim was the uncle, Luth was the nephew. So we can say that Ibrahim and Shuaib and Moses, Musa, wassalam, they are post-Abrahamic area, era of human history. That is why we, in, I think, as far as I have uh, studied, I have not studied by the Old Testament thoroughly, but we don't find any, uh, any mention of Hazrat Hud and Hazrat Saleh in Bible. Only the prophets who came to the progeny of Ibrahim, wassalam, And before Ibrahim, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, because he belonged to a progeny of Hazrat, Ibra- Hazrat Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. But Quran is giving us, you know, three nations before Ibrahim. Three nations, as I told you, may be said to be post-Abrahamic. Now, what's the difference, basic difference? Whenever you read in about, in Quran, the reference about the people of Nuh, people of Fud, people of Saleh, only one thing is mentioned, and that was shirk. Nothing else. What does it mean? That the human culture and social order had not developed up till to a level where other perversions, you know, could be found. Only the Ummul Khabais, the, the mother of all the misguidance, and there's a shirk. So you'll find always Hazrat Inu alayhi salam calling his people La Tushriku Billah. Hazrat Ehud, La Tushriku Billah. Hazrat Saleh, La Tushriku Billah. There was only one thing that was shirk. But in post-Abrahamic era, we find number one, Hazrat Ehud, social perversion, sexual perversion, which cuts at the root of human society, social order. Approaching men lustfully and to have their sexual desire gratified with men. Sodomy, they call it sodomy. Today you have a better word, more respectable, homosexuality. You know, because they have changed the word so that it shouldn't, shouldn't appear so bad. Sodomy, and look, note here please, sodomy is a better word than what we use in Urdu or Arabic, lavatat. Lavatat, you know, it denotes to the name of a prophet of Allah, Luth. And prophet of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, his name shouldn't be degraded by using his word in this term, Lavatat, no, Sodomy. That, that relates to Sodom, the city where Hazrat Luth used to live, Sodom. So, Sodomy is a better word 
never use the water. Anyhow, so this was the perversion in the sexual behavior of man. And you will find about the people to whom Hazrat Shaib salam was sent, their financial malpractices started. Cheating people, not marrying the full when you are selling something by marrying, not giving full when you are weighing, out, weighing it out, and so on. These were now the economic malpractices. And number three, in the case of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, political suppression and oppression of a nation by another nation. The Bani Israel were oppressed by the people of Pharaoh. So these are the three things, the politico-socio-economic system of, of man. Either, you know, the social order is disrupted. And this is disrupted when the balance between man and woman and the relationship between man and woman is disturbed. Or financial or economic crisis, which comes out from, you know, this, this economic disorders. And third is political oppression and discrimination and so on. So these are... A few, and we shall find here, you know, that the mention of people of Nuh in one section, one Ruku, people of Hud in one se section. In the same way, all these five, they have been allocated only one section each in this surah. But about Musa alayhi salatu was salam, full ten sections, very detailed mention. Why? Actually, this was the preamble. Because as I told you, these two surahs, Surah Al-Anam and Surah Al-Araf, they were revealed just before Hijrah. Now, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions were to move to Medina. And there was to come the direct contact with the Jews. So it is actually a preface to, of that direct, you know, address to the Jews, which we find in Surah Al-Baqarah. And incidentally, there are also ten sections of Surah Al-Baqarah. And in the same way, you will find full ten sections of Surah Al-Araf. They are de dedicated to the history of Moses والسلام, and his people, the Bani Israel. With these few points, you know, let me start and begin the, the study of the text. And we sent to Madian. Now, who were Madian? Very few people know that they were also a branch of the progeny of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. Hazrat Ibrahim married Hazrat Sarah. There was no issue for a very long time. Then, you know, Allah gave him first son through Hajra alayhi salatu was salam, Ismail. Then Hazrat Sarah also got a son. He was Hazrat Ishaq. From Hazrat Ishaq, they started this line, you know, Yaqub and then the Bani Israel, the whole history. From Ismail, the people in Arabia, these Quraysh, in whom Muhammad sallallahu was raised. But he had, Hazrat Ibrahim had another wives also. There was one wife called Katura. And the line, you know, of progeny of Ibrahim through Katura is called Bani Katura. And in them, you know, this was a branch of the progeny of Ibrahim. And in them, you know, Madian, Midian or Madian was one of the sons of Katura. And they settled, you know, the, in the area on the eastern side of the Gulf of Aqaba. This was the area, you know, where these people were living. And this area, region is also called Madian or Midian. And the tribe was also called Madian or Midian. And among this tribe, you know, one of that tribe from their own brethren, Hazrat Shaib, you know, was selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and appointed as messenger to them. He also said the same thing. Oh my people, you do worship to Allah only, love Him only, obey Him only, serve Him only. Don't take any other God besides Allah. You don't have any God except Him. You don't have any God except Him. To you, a clear proof and sign has come from your Lord. What is this Bayyana? I quoted last night the ayah from the beginning of Surah Al-Bayyana. لَمْ يَكُنِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِقِينَ مُنْفَكِّينَ حَتَّى تَعْتِيَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَةِ And what is that Bayyana? 
رسول من اللہ یتلو صحف متحرتن فیہا کتب القیمہ So he is referring to himself that this is bayyana. A messenger has been appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to call you to the right path. For awful kaila wal mizan. Now in addition to their shirk, he is criticizing his people for these financial malpractices in business, in dealing. So you must complete the mayor. And you, you, when you are weighing for people, you should give full weight. Wala tab khasun nasa. اشیاہم don't deprive of their things ولا تفسدو فی الارض بعد اسلاحہ and don't be mischief mongers in this earth after its reformation because after every messenger some era was of reformation when the people of Nuh they were destroyed now the nations which arose from the progeny of Nuh for some time they were reformed they were only worshipping one Allah but you know later on Shaitan, he led them astray. Then a messenger was sent. Then the people of Hud were destroyed. But then people who were saved, from them you know, another nation uh, you start. And for some time they were on the right path. So this has been happening after every messenger of Allah. That for some time the people used to be on the right path. وَلَا تُسْدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ إِسْلَاحِهَا ذَالُكُمْ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ This is good for you. Only if you believe. وَلَا تَقْعُدُوا بِكُلِّ سِرَاطٍ Don't sit on in wait on every road. تُوْعِدُونَ وَتَسُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِلِ اللَّهِ Threatening the people and barring them from the way of Allah. مَنْ آمَنَ بِهِ تَبْغُونَ هَاعِ وَجَهِ Whosoever believes in Allah, you want to distort for him his religion. You want to bring about crookedness in it. وَسْكُرُوا إِذَنْتُمْ قَلِيلًا Just remember when you were very small in number. فَكَسَّرَكُمْ He multiplied you in numbers. بَنْذُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And you should see what had been happening and what had been the end of the mischief mongers. You must remember what happened to the people of Saleh. They were not very far off from that place. The, north, the northwestern you know, corner of the Arabian Peninsula. And the east coast of Khalid Yaqaba, they are very close to each other. So in the same way, they knew the history of Ad also. They knew what happened to the cities of Gomorrah and Sodom. That was also not very far off. On the banks of the Dead Sea, these big townships were situated and they were destroyed. So, فَنْزُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُفْسِدِينَ وَإِنْ كَانَ تَعِفَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ عَمَنُوا Now, if a one party amongst you has come to believe بِالَّذِي أُرْسِلْتُ بِهِ on what has been what has been sent with me وَتَعِفَةٌ لَمْ يُمِنُوا but there remains a part of our nation of our tribe who are not believing who are resisting who are rejecting فَسْوِرُوا so now he is addressing his fellow believers now you must have patience you will have to have the persecution from them and you have to stand fast You have to be forbearing. فَسْبِرُوا حَتَّى يَحْكُمَ اللَّهُ بَيْنَنَا Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his verdict. He will decide between us. Now we are in two parties. The party of Satan and party of Allah. Now this, is, this conflict is going and it will continue. Till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his verdict. وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الْحَاكِمِينَ And he is the best of the judges. قَالَ الْمَلَوْ الَّذِينَ اسْتَقْبَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمِهِ In the same way, the chiefs of his tribe who rejected him, who belied him, they said, لَنَخْرَجَنَّكَ يَا شُعَيْبُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَكَ مِنْ قَرْيَتِنَا O Shuaib, we shall expel you out from our city, our township. And not only you, but also the people who are with you. أَوْ لَتَعُودُنَّ فِي مِلَّتِنَا Or you have to come back to our creed, the creed of our forefathers. Whatever we had been doing, you have to do that or we shall expel you. You know, it has happened everywhere. If you know the history of Greek philosophers, that was the option given to Socrates. Whatever you are preaching, stop preaching. Or this is the cup of poison, you have to take it here and now. No third option. Either you promise, you will keep your mouth shut. Or you take this cup of poison here and now. 
and Socrates, as you know, he preferred the cup of poison. He took it. I don't want to live when I can't propagate and I can't say what I believe, what I think to be right. If I am not allowed to say it out, what for to live? Why to live? I don't want to live. Okay. If these are the two alternatives, this cup of poison is preferable for me. So that was the threat, you know. Either you come back to the fold of our creed or we shall expel you. Kala walau kunna karihin. Hazrat Shaib replied, what? Even if we abhor it, we don't like. You want to, you know, force us to, to come back to your creed. قَدْ اِفْتَرَيْنَا عَلَى اللَّهِ قَذِبًا اِنْ عُدْنَا فِي مِلَّتِكُمْ بَعْدَا اِذْنَ جَعْنَ اللَّهُ بِنَهَا If we come back to your creed after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved us from it, has taken us out from that darkness, if we go, go back, then it means we had concocted and forged a lie against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I was preaching, that meant it was not correct. If I go back on that, قَدْ اِفْتَرَيْنَا عَلَى اللَّهِ قَذِبًا اِنْ عُدْنَا فِي بِلَّتِكُمْ بَعْدَ اِذْنَا جَعْنَ اللَّهُ مِنْهَا وَمَا يَكُونُ لَنَا نَعُودَ فِيهَا إِلَّا إِنَشَاءَ اللَّهُ It's not possible for us to now go back to the former creed. Except if Allah desires, because He is Almighty. If He decides something, we can't do anything. But you know, on our own, by our own choice, we will never return to the creed which we had left. وَسِعَ رَبُّنَا كُلَّ شَعِنِ الْمَا our Lord embraces everything in his knowledge. Nothing is out of knowledge. We have put our faith and confidence in him. Now he prayed to Allah. Oh, our Lord, you decide. You give the verdict between us and them. With truth and justice. You decide the matter between us. And you are the best of all the deciders. وَقَالَ الْمَلَوْ لَذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمِهِ لَيْنِ اتَّبَعَتُمْ شُعَيْبًا إِنَّكُمْ إِذَا لَخَاسِرُونَ And these people, these chiefs, said to those people who had, came, who had come to believe in Shu'ayb alayhi salatu wa salam, لَيْنِ اتَّبَعَتُمْ شُعَيْبًا If you follow Shu'ayb, إِنَّكُمْ إِذَا لَخَاسِرُونَ You will all be doomed. You will be in a great loss. It was a threat given to the people. Now the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came, the verdict came, in the form of a very big, very mighty earthquake. They were all dead, lying in their houses, in their dwellings. Those who rejected, belied Shu'ib, they were the losers. They were doomed. Fatawalla on whom? And now Hazrat Shaib, you know, left them. He turned away from them. Wakala ya kaum, lakad ablak to kum risalati rabbi. And he said, Oh my people, I had conveyed to you the messages of my Lord. Wanasato lakum. And I want most sincere to you. I want wanted most sincerely that you come to the right path. Fakafa asa ala kaum in kafreen. Now, how can I lament about these people who were the unbelievers? What does it show? What, what does it show? He had the grief. His nation, whole nation destroyed. But you know, he says, How can I lament? Because I had, you know, warned you duly. I had conveyed to you the messages of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, these ayat, you know, they are very similar to the ayat 42 to 45 of Surah Al-An'am. And this is, you know, one similarity. When two surahs are a pair, there must be some points which must be common between them. Similarities. Now, one similarity. This subject has been discussed fully in ayat 42 to 45 of Surah Al-An'am. And we never sent any of our prophets to any city, to any township. But we seized the people who were living therein. Will basai, misery, wardwarai, and distress. La'allahum yaddarraoon. So that they should, be, they should become humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if they are living in comfort, they have plenty to eat, 
اٹس یو نو دا نیچرل ریزلٹ کمس دیٹ پیپل گو اینڈ دے جسٹ فار دیٹ اللہ سبحان و تعالی سو اف سم سم ڈفیکلٹی از کمنگ سم ڈسٹریس دین یو نو اف دیر از اینی ڈارمنٹ ایمان ان دی ان سم پورشن آف دی ہارٹ اٹ ول کنڈل اٹ ول کم اٹ ول کم اپ آن دی سرفیس آف دی کانشیس لیول بٹ یو نو وٹ ہیپنڈ those nations who hearts had hardened they never benefited from these you know this which we which i i quoted the ayah from surah al-sajda fala nuziqannahum min al-'adhab al-adna dun al-'adhab al-akbar before that last and final punishment of extermination of a nation small things were sent to them so that if they can wake up from their deep slumber let them wake up so ma badalna makana sayyat al-hasana and then when they didn't pay any heed we changed the evil for the good hatta afaw they became very affluent wa qalu qad masaba nadara wa sarra and they said it's nothing you know these things come and go this distress comes comforts come after comforts distress after distress comforts it is nothing from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's just normal you know the cycle which is going on It's nothing but history. فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتَةً And then we seized them suddenly. وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ And they were unmindful that the final verdict of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at hand. وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا Had the people of these cities and towns believed and taken to taqwa لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ We would have opened for them the gates of all our blessings from the heavens as, far, as well as from the earth walakin kazzabu but they decided to reject to belie our revelations fa khaznahum bima kanu yaksibun so we seized them due to their earnings the deeds that they were earning afa amina ahlul quran yatihum basuna biatan wa hum naimun now you know turning towards these people quraish who were living in, in Arabia at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are the people living in these cities, in Mecca, in Taif, and so on, they, do they feel secure? Afa amina ahlul qura? That the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot come to them when they are sleeping? If it could come to the people of Aad, the people of Samud, and if it come to the towns of Gomorrah and Sodom, if it could come to the people of Shaib, can't this punishment come to you? اب امن اهل القرى ياتيهم باسنا ضحى وهم يلعبون do they feel secure that our punishment will not come to them in the daylight when they are playing afamenu makr allah do they feel secure from the plans of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the devisings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa fala yamanu makr allah illa alqaum alkhasirun And none feel secure against Allah's devising except the people who shall be losers, who shall be doomed. Awalam yahdali lazina yarisuna larda min baadi ahliha. Does not this thing lead them to some right path? That the people who inherited the land after the destruction of the previous nation or generation. Allah nasha wa sabnahum bi dunubahim. That as we destroyed them, we can... send them also the same punishment due to their sins and we said put, put a seal on their hearts and they don't listen now these are the towns and cities we are relating to you narrating to you the, the news the big news their big news وَلَقَدْ جَاتْهُمْ رُسُلُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ To all of them, our messengers came with clear teachings, clear proofs, clear signs. فَمَا كَانُوا لَيُؤْمِنُوا بِمَا كَذَّبُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ But they were not, it was, it was not for them to believe what they had rejected in the beginning. This is the second point which is similar. Because we found in Surah Al-Anam وَنُقَلِّبُ أَفْئِدَتَهُمْ وَأَبْسَارَهُمْ كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ I told you. When you know it dawns upon a person that this is the truth, he must jump at it, accept it. If after the heart, you know, the mind, 
the intellect, the soul has testified that this is correct. Whatever he is saying, it is correct. And even then a person rejects that truth out of his haughtiness, out of his, you know, being megalomaniac. I can't accept his, if I accept his point of view, that means he has succeeded and I am defeated. I am not going to take his point. So then you know the faculty and the capability of seeing the truth that is withdrawn from Allah, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is, you know, تِلْكَ الْقُرَانَ قُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَقَدْ جَاتُمْ رُسُلُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَمَا كَانُوا لُيُؤْمِنُوا بِمَا كَزَّمُوا مِنْ قَبْلِ كَذَلِكَ يَتْبَعُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِ الْكَافِرِينَ And in this way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the seal on the hearts of the unbelievers. وَمَا وَجَدْنَا لِأَكْسَرِهِمْ مِنْ أَحْدٍ And we didn't find in most of them the fulfillment of the covenant. Which covenant? That will come in this very surah, inshallah, today, ayah number 172. When you know, before the creation of the world of matter, only the souls of all human beings were created. And from all those souls, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a covenant. Alastu bi rabbikum? Qalu bala. Am I not your Lord? And all of us replied, why not? We accept you as our Lord. But you know, most of the human beings don't fulfill this covenant. We found most of them. Just as Shaitan has said, you won't find most of them as grateful. And that is that has come to be true. The most of the progeny of Adam proved to be ungrateful. Summa Basna Now it is starting. The history of Bani Israel and what happened. Between Moses and Pharaoh. Summa Basna Min Badihi Musa Bi Ayatina. After all these five, which have been mentioned before, Nu, Hud, Saleh, Lut, Shaib. Five, now the sixth. Summa Basna Min Badihi Musa Bi Ayatina. As I told you, now this is a very long discourse covering ten sections of this surah. Summa Basna Min Badihi Musa Bi Ayatina. Then we sent. With our signs, clear signs, clear proofs, miracles. Towards Fir'aun, and what is Fir'aun? It was the title of the kings. The real Coptic Egyptian kings, they were called Fir'aun. Just as Namrud was a title. Just as Qaisar for the emperor of Rome, it was a title. Kisra for the emperors of Iran, it was a title, not name. Firaun was not a name, it was a title. Names were different. Firaun after Firaun, Firaun after Firaun, Nimrud after Nimrud, Nimrud, Nimrud after Nimrud, Kaiser after Kaiser, Kisra after Kisra. So Firaun was actually the title. Ila Firauna Wamalaihi and his chiefs, Fazalamu Biha, their people treated those signs, you know, two big signs. The staff of Musa turning into a serpent. The hand becoming absolute white, shining white, when it white from his nobuzum. So now you see and look what was the end of those people who were mischief mongers. And Musa said to Fir'aun, Ya Fir'aun, Inni Rasulun min Rabbil Alameen. O Fir'aun, I am the messenger from the, from the Lord of the worlds. Haqiqun. Absolutely firm and free of any falsehood. Haqiqun. Ala an la qul ala Allah illa illa al haq. That I am not going to say anything, forge any thing, attribute anything to Allah except what is true. Except the truth. Qad jaytukum bi bayyinatim min Rabbikum. And I have come to you. With clear signs, clear miracles from your Lord. Farsil Maria Bani Israel. So now you allow Bani Israel to go with me. They came from Palestine to Egypt in the time of Yusuf alayhi salatu was A few hundred years ago. But now you are persecuting them. Now you are torturing them. Now you are doing all sorts of evil deeds to them. So now let them go from where we came. Arsil Ma'ana Bani Israel. This is a very important point. You know the basic dawah of Hazrat Musa to Fir'aun consists of two parts. 
ایکسپٹ می ایز مسجر آف اللہ آم دی مسجر آف اللہ ٹوڈس یو نمبر ٹو لیٹ دی بنی اسرائیل گو آؤٹ آف دس کنٹری ناؤ اسٹاپ پر سیکیورٹی بلا تو عظیم ہوں دیز ورڈ آر ناٹ ہیئر بٹ بیکاز یو نو دس اسٹوری ہیز بن ریپیٹڈ مینی اے ٹائم بلا تو عظیم ہوں نا اسٹاپ ٹارچرنگ دیم اینڈ پر سیکیورٹنگ دیم لیٹ دیم گو ہر سلمانہ بنی اسرائیل کہا ان کن تجے تب آیا تن فاتح بے ہاں ان کن تمنا سواد یقین پھر آن سیڈ او If you claim that you have come with clear signs and miracles and proofs, so produce them before us if you are true. Falqa sa. He threw down his staff. Faiza hi asorban mubin. And behold, it was a serpent manifest, clear, a snake. Wa nazar yadahu faiza hi abadawul in nazari. And he drew forth his hand from his bosom. And lo, behold, it was white. For all the beholders. قَالَ الْمَلَوْ مِنْ قَوْمِ فِرْعَوْنِ إِنَّ هَذَا لَصَاهِرٌ عَلِيمٌ Now the chieftains, you know, this was the court of Fir'aun. Fir'aun was sitting and there were the chieftains, the great chiefs, chieftains of that, that nation. They said to Fir'aun, indeed, he is a very big magician, no doubt. He has proved to be a very skillful magician, sorcerer. یرید ان یخرجکم من ارضکم فما لا تعمرون now this second this ayah number 110 it is the saying of firaun he said to his chiefs this this person this person musa he wants to turn you out from your land with his magic فما لا تعمرون so what's your advice what should we do how to tackle with this problem قالوا ارجه واخاه وارسل في البدائل حاشرين put him and his brother you know off for some time and you send in the whole of the land the peoples who will bring to you yatuk ab kull sahir alim all the skilled magicians from throughout from the all the hooks nooks and corners of the country must be gathered so that they can compete with him they can challenge him Now to cut a long story short, you know, people were sent, messages were sent throughout the kingdom and, you know, people came all. All the magicians, all the sorcerers, they came to Fir'aun. And they said, surely we shall be rewarded if we become triumphant and if we defeat Moses, we will be Divided. Now this is the level, this is the mentality of the magicians. Moses never demanded any reward to show, you know, his sorcery and magic. But these people, they were professionals. They were magicians. They came and they said, well, we must be rewarded. If we become, you know, victor, we are the victors. And Firaun said, oh yes, and you will be Very near to me, I'll raise your level and status over so many chieftains. You will be the nearest to me, Mukarrabin. Because now, you know, I'm in a fix. A very big problem is facing me. If you can take me out from it, you will be rewarded. Not only rewarded, you will be permanent, you know, in, in a very close position to mine. Qalu ya Musa imman nulqiyah wa imman takuna nahlul bulqeen. Now you know, there was the competition. They said challengingly and confidently, O oh Musa, will you be the one to throw first or, should, or do you allow us to throw in the beginning? Qalu ya Musa imman nulqiyah, imman tulqiyah wa imman nakuna nahnul bulqeen. Qala alquum. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, he replied with the same confidence, okay, you throw. Will produce what you have. Falamma al qaw saharu ayun al nas. When they threw, they really bewitched the people's sight, eyes. Was tarhabuhum, and they terrified them, all the people, because all their, you know, ropes and all the things that they 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 threw on the ground, they became snakes. Appeared to be snakes to the all people who were seeing it. So all people were, you know, terrified. Terrified them. وَجَاوُوا بِسِحْرٍ عَظِيمٍ And surely, they produced a very big magic, no doubt. وَقْوَاهِنَا إِلَى مُوسَى 
and then we sent our revelation to Moses. And al saak, don't wait now. Now you throw your stuff. Faiza hiya talqafu ma And it started swallowing all the falsehood that they had created. It was only false, nothing else. So you know this, this snake, you know, the, the staff of Moses also turned into a snake. And this snake swallowed all the snakes which were produced by the magic of the magicians. فَوَقَالْ حَقْقُ The truth was established. وَبَتَلَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And whatever they had did proved to be false. فَغُولِبُوا هُنَا لَكَ So they were overpowered. وَالْقَلَبُوا صَاغِرِينَ And they become, became humiliated. وَأُلْقِيَ السَّحْرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ And all the magicians as if they were thrown down in prostration. أُلْقِيَ is passive voice. Not only that they themselves bowed down in prostration. They as if somebody else had turned them down. And it was so instantaneous. وَأُلْقِيَ السَّحْرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And they said and declared, We come to believe in the Lord of, the all, of all the worlds. رَبِّ مُوسَى وَحَارُونَ Who is the Lord of Moses and Harun. قَالَ فِرَانُ آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ قَبْلَا نَعَذَنَا لَكُمْ Now, you know, His Majesty, He said, Fir'aun said, Oh, you have come to believe in Him before I grant you permission to believe? How come? You dare to believe in him before I give you the permission. In Hada la Makrun Kartumuhu Fil Madina. Now he was cunning enough, you know, that he in, instantaneously it came to his mind. The, the situation was very bad. It, you know, turned just opposite to what he was hoping. That Musa will be defeated and you know all these things will pass. But now the things which appeared were absolutely to the contrary. But he was intelligent enough. He said, oh, it seems it is the plot that you hatched in this city. You and Musa are one. And you have conspired. You want to expel all of us from this city, from our land. So very soon you will come to know what's the result. I will order your hands and feet to be cut from the opposite sides. Right hand, left feet, foot. Or left hand and right foot. And then I will crucify all of you. They said, okay. You know, the truth had dawned on them. They had seen that Musa is not a sorcerer. Musa is not a magician. This is not magic. They knew the limits of the magic. They were experts in magic. They knew to what extent the magic could go. It was not magic. It was something else. It was a miracle. It dawned on them. So the truth had come to them. And this truth had come to them so intensely that they were ready to face any persecution. Even lay down their lives. Okay, if you want to do it, go ahead. We shall be returning to our Lord. But harm come to, could come to us. We shall be returning to our Lord. And you are not taking vengeance upon us. Only because we have come to believe in the revelations and the miracles of our Lord when they came before us. And then they prayed to Allah, Rabbana afrigh alayna sabra, do our Lord. Now in this hour of trial, you pour on us the patience and forbearance. وَتَوَفَّنَا مُسْلِمِينَ And you cause us to die as Muslims, lest we should, you know, turn back due to this torturing and this persecution. Lest we should, we should turn back, we should give us the courage to remain Muslims and remain firm in our belief, even our hands are cut. And even if our feet are cut. And so said the chiefs from the nation of Fir'aun. Will you allow Moses and his nation and his people, Bani Israel, 
ٹو میک مس چیف ان دی لینڈ وہ یزرا کا وہ آل ہتا کا اینڈ لیو یو اینڈ یور گاڈس دے وانٹیڈ دیٹ اسٹرن ایکشن شوڈ بی ٹیکن اگینسٹ موزیز بفور اٹ بیکمز ان کنٹرولیبل تو دی نپ دی ایول ان دی بٹ دیٹ واز دی ایڈوائس آف دی چیف آف آف دی نیشن آف فرآن بٹ پلیز نوٹ ہیئر دس فرآن ہو واز ناؤ رولنگ ایجپٹ واز جسٹ لائک اے ینگر بردر ٹو حضرت موسا علیہ السلام When Hazrat Musa alayhi salam in his infancy, he had come to the palace of Fir'aun that we will read inshallah in Surah Al-Qasas, you know, when the mother gave birth to him. And then because the command was that any male child born to any Israeli woman must be put to death. So when, you know, she feared that people will come and take him away and kill him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired her. You put him in a box. and put the box in Nile, in the river. We shall return him to you. That, that is our promise. That was the inspiration that Allah gave to the mother of Moses. And now this box, you know, reached the palace. And he, he was taken out. The, the king at that time was the father of the king who was now reigning. And he was with, without any child, issueless. His wife, you know, and he was from the Israelites. Wife. It is mentioned, you know, in Quran. In Surah Al-Tahreem, Imrat of Iran. And she saved the life. They had recognized that this is an Israeli child. But because he was issued us, she said, okay, we shall keep him. We shall take him, we adopt him as a son. And somehow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put some, you know, mercy in the heart of that Fir'aun. And he was saved. Now he was brought up in the palace of Fir'aun. After some time that Fir'aun also get a son, got a son. So now these two were brought up like brothers. Moses was as if a, an older brother, elder brother of this Firon. And now that Firon, the older one, the father of this one, when he had grown old, he abdicated the throne. Just as King Fahd, you know, he has handed over the authority to Prince Abdullah. So he had given, you know, the authority and now he was the reigning emperor now. And he loved Hazrat Musa. He didn't want to kill them, kill him. And now the chiefs were saying, You will give them the license. You will keep them safe. Are you going to leave them alone? So that they, they produce mischief in the land. Because what they were doing, according to their interest, vested interest, it was a mischief. And tazara, And they leave and forsake you and your lords. He said, no, no. We shall kill all their male offsprings. What they will be able to do? What harm they will be able to do to us? That you know they will be reduced. We shall be keeping alive only the women. We are very much in control over them. They can't pose a threat to us. Don't fear. قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِ اِسْتَعِينُوا بِاللَّهِ وَاسْبِرُوا Now for the first time you know when the, he, he had seen a vision and he had given the command that any male child when, when Musa was born at that time also any male child born to an Israeli woman must be put to death again the same you know order ordinance was issued قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِهِ and Musa said to his people Now you call the help of Allah and have patience. You must have forbearance. It's a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Allah. This earth, this land belongs to Allah. He makes it to inherit anyone whom he likes. If he has decided that he is giving this time and despite. To Fir'aun and this nation, okay, what can we do? Except to accept what he has decided and to have patience. But surely the end result will be for the pious people who believe in him, who have taqwa. But these things, you know, ups and downs come to the people. But the end, especially the hereafter, that is reserved. The good of the hereafter is reserved for those who believe. They said, O oh Moses, O oh Musa, we were persecuted before you came to us. 
and we are still being persecuted when you have come to us. So that was, you know, their feelings. Uzina bin Qabli and Tatiana. Wamim Badama Jetana. The same persecutions are coming to us. Our male offspring is being put to death. Only the females kept alive. Kala Asar of Bukum and Yulika Aduakum. He said, it's just possible. We must hope for it. That your Lord destroys your enemy. And then he gives you the rule of the earth. He makes you the vice students on earth. And then he will see what you do. This ayah is very important regarding the history of the subcontinent, Indian subcontinent. We the Muslims were fearing Hindu majority. And we prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, just give us freedom and just save us from the Britishers as well as deliver us from the threatening slavery to the Hindus. And we shall establish your deen and we shall, you know, make your kalima supreme. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us Pakistan. It was a miracle. Nobody could hope that Pakistan would be established even a few months before the establishment of Pakistan. It was because we had promised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we shall make your deen supreme over that land, if you grant us Pakistan. Now Allah granted, Now he will see how you behave, whether you fall back on your words and promises, or you fulfill the promise. And we fail to fulfill the promise. That is why the beating came to us in the form of the incident of 1971. What happened? How many Muslims Pakistani killed? How many of them? 93,000 of them became captives with Hindus, POWs. 43 regular troops, 43,000 taken captives. So all that was actually the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a nation makes a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then goes back on the promise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a Muslim nation, if he makes a promise, Allah fulfills the promise, but then, now you must also fulfill your part of the agreement and covenant. And if you don't, well, you are punished. And we are being punished even today. The same rule, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a messenger to any people, now there were coming to them the distresses, different types of inflictions, smaller inflictions before the final extermination. And we seized the nation of Fir'aun, Bissinina, years of drought, no rain coming, and the dearth of you know, fruits and crops, so that they might be they minded they might feel admonished. Whenever something good came to them, they said, this is ours, we deserve it. <laughs> and whenever there some calamity befell them, they used to attribute it to the evil omens of Musa and those who were with him. Allah listen behold their bad omens are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever comes to them comes from Allah with his permission but most of them don't know these things the realities of this universe barakallahu li wa lakum fil quran al-azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikil hakim